Hello and welcome back to Ask the Masters. I am here with Master Dave Penton, who's going to host today's show. Dave, what do you got going on today? Well, Rick's been doing such a great job with these Saturday updates, uh, and and today I'm just super excited. So we've got um, we're we're doing a little bit of a different perspective today. We're going to still stay on the business side of things, uh, but today we're getting um, uh, not only the builders' perspectives, uh, but we, we've moved over to the East Coast. So we've got an East Coast show this week. Um, uh, but we're also um, going to be getting uh, talking to some subcontractors uh, and, and kind of understanding uh, some different facets of the market. So we've been pretty builder heavy um, uh, uh, up to this point. So um, uh, just for some introductions, uh, and then we'll get to know each of them. So we've got uh, Brian Van Kirk out of Florida, and he and his family have been in the pool industry for decades, and they run one of the largest companies uh, within the state of Florida. And then we've got Peter from Pebble Tech Canada. So we've got the, the north of the border perspective, uh, and, and tell us how you have some insights of your Florida market as well. Yeah, so um, I operate Public Tech Canada here in Ontario. Uh, we do have uh, applicators in Quebec and in British Columbia. Uh, we are primarily a business-to-business -business service. Uh, we solely install the Public Technology finishes. And here in Ontario, uh, we service about uh, a dozen builders. Uh, it is a seasonal business, of course, which allows me also to have some insight uh, with my wife's business, uh, Michelle from Siesta Pebble in Southwest Florida. And uh, down there, she... Uh, does the same thing, operating a Pebble Tech uh, install business for about 55 builders uh, throughout Southwest Florida. Perfect. And then we also have Ryan Oaks. And Ryan Oaks is a bit of a Swiss Army knife. Uh, if you guys know Ryan, he kind of has his fingers in every part of the industry. Um, so uh, Ryan has built some of the most incredible pools in the Carolinas. Um, Google him if you're not sure. Uh, so he's from uh, Clearwater Construction Group. And um, they, they do a lot of design work, uh, but what many people may or may not know uh, is he uh, also runs Revolution Gunite and Revolution Finishes, um, which is based out of the Carolinas, and they do a ton of work, um, kind of the, the Virginia, kind of the central eastern seaboard. And, uh, and Ryan, you guys are also a Pebble applicator as well. Yeah, that's right. We're a Pebble Tech applicator. Uh, that's Revolution Pool Finishes. And then Revolution Gunite, as you said, is our Gunite company. And Clearwater is our design company. Awesome. Well, I want to come back around, but I really want to start with Brian Van Kirk this morning uh, and just understand kind of the Florida market. And, and uh, I know you guys are, um, you know, you're really... Uh, I saw this morning um, that, that Florida is starting to open up the beaches and, and Florida seems to be loosening some of the rules. So kind of talk a little bit about the, the market as you guys are seeing it there um, and, and how you guys are, how you guys have, have weathered through this, uh, this storm. Absolutely. First off, thank you, Dave. Appreciate it, Randy, Peter, Ryan. Um, thank you very much. It's an honor to be part of the show. And um, like you said, I'm Brian Van Kirk. I'm third generation. Um, we're here in South Florida. I work along with my brothers and my uncle and my father, and uh, we employ right around 100 individuals. So with this, you know, as a family ran, but local here, we have a lot of connections with the people and, and, and the effect of it. But we've been very blessed and fortunate, obviously, to make the necessity changes internally with uh, you know, masks for clients that are coming in or for our employees, gloves. We have obviously Perel everywhere for everyone to, to make sure they're sanitizing to keep those types of uh, conditions as, as great as we can. Even uh, here we have a 30,000 square foot building, uh, an indoor showroom. So we've had uh, virtually three times a week, we have a sanitizing company come in and, and clean our, our facilities so that we can still have those clients and, and have them come in because regardless, we feel here when you can touch, feel, see products, uh, materials, it, it really helps in the process. So it's tough when you gotta load up your, your, your car or truck and try to bring it to people. We're, we're really set up internally to have them come here. And um, those changes though are, are, are good changes. I mean, cleanliness and, and whatnot, they're not um, a tough change. But with that also, you know, the market itself here, it, it, it seems to be buyer driven still. And 
people are in their homes. Florida's getting hot. It's, it's approaching the summer and people are getting a little stir crazy. They're, they're really wanting pools and they're seeing how fast it could be done. Um, not, not cutting quality, but in fear of the cities and the municipalities and how they're um, accepting or reviewing new projects, permits, because down here, the permit process is typically eight weeks. So they're, they're thinking, man, if they're shut down, is it going to be six months to get a permit? So then, but it's not um, really these cities have done a really well job of accepting electronically, reviewing electronically. Um, and that's really permitted us to thrive on the build side because um, internally we have an engineer, Don Cesar on the third, and he's able to stamp our plans, but also the inspections. So if there's certain cities or municipalities that are not accepting or having their men go out there to inspect, they're accepting private inspection, third party inspections with a certification from an engineer. So we're very set up to deliver our product in a timely fashion um, and, and, and to keep things moving. And with that, the opportunity to uh, excel or really take this time to keep the ball moving and stay ahead and not take it as a, a step backwards is really showing dividends uh, in the company, but in this, in this market, we're not really going to truly see um, personally at Van Kirk, we're not going to truly see the, the effects of it until about two, three months, because that's really our backlog of build. So, but with the new jobs, new contracts coming in, it seems to be um, going to be well. It's a, it's a good market for people who are buyers. And that's really helpful on our side of being able to keep these employees and keep them uh, working when, when you see the country, you know, really struggling on a different level of unemployment and whatnot. And, and that side of sales is allowing us to prosper and keep our people, which is, is truly important for us. Um, so in my opinion, absolutely, it's, it's a fine line. You need to have your workers uh, follow all the municipality codes of, of protection, gloves, and we supply all that to them. But if you're willing to um, communicate with the clients, they're, they're willing to still meet, you know, whether that be we don't go inside, we stay outside, we stay in their, in their lanai's and, and we go over the projects and desires. They're willing to do it. And um, we really see that as a, as a opportunity um, instead of a, a, a real negative. It's an opportunity right now if you're willing to, to, to follow everything because you need to respect it to, to really cut the curve. You don't want to come off as arrogant because that's that's terrible but you if you follow those those rules and regulations people are being really inclined and to buy yeah one of the things i was having a conversation last week um uh, with an individual and they said um uh, this was somebody actually outside of the pool industry and they said man you know if you have a pool right now florida is a real unique market so you know um especially in florida where the temperatures are already to the place where people can be swimming and that um, if you have a pool currently, boy, you really feel lucky during this time. Uh, you know, Florida, some of the restrictions don't seem quite as, as um, tight as some of the rest of the countries, but out here in California where all the kids are home and, and uh, you know, really there's nothing to do, beaches are closed, everything. Uh, you know, the people out here in California that have pools are, you know, they at least have that aspect to their property. And, um, you know, we're, we're seeing some of that uh, kind of this staycation thing uh, really coming back in that we saw after 9-11. Uh, are you guys, uh, it sounds like you guys are feeling that and realizing Absolutely. that as well. Absolutely. These, the home is your sanctuary and it's really becoming your safest zone and people are really recognizing that. And when recognizing that, you know, 9-11 was, a terrible time but it, it was similar um when you, when you're really stricken or scared to go outside your your home in florida it's hot right? we're already in the 90s and when you're stuck inside your kids love playing outside well now they're hot sweaty you look across the street your neighbor's got a pool and you're like i need a pool because the kids everything but it's also bringing families closer together when this occurs and that's what we're really seeing as well is communities 
yeah, they're, they're keeping their distance, but, but they are coming together more. They're interacting more um, than they were of recent times when it was really becoming disconnect. You know, people were really disconnect the phone call. It was more text and email. And now people are, are starting to face to face, which is, it's good to see too, when you're, you're going over to these new clients and you see the family morale and whatnot. And, and then they're excited about that pool. Um, it, it is a market that people are looking at their home as a safe haven. And that's where you're safest, where your family's safest. And if this happens ever again, well, they're set up to enjoy their time and not go a little stir crazy, um, just being stuck inside. So, yeah. Sure. I want to juxtapose that a little bit and bring Peter in here. So, Peter, um, you know, you're you're holed up uh, up in Ontario, Canada, um, and Ontario. I mean, Canada in general uh, is really um, almost the polar opposite to what you're seeing in Florida. So, I I really want to get your perspective because uh, you know you're so familiar with both markets. Um, and uh, so, just touch a little bit about what you're seeing in Canada and some of the restrictions there. Uh, because it's it's pretty it's even more than I think anywhere in the United States what you guys are noticing there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, Brian is a great uh, has great input on what's happening there in Florida, and I agree with what he's saying. And I think it's going to be a good market there. Unfortunately, here in Ontario, uh, here in Toronto, especially, we're on a complete lockdown until May the twelfth. And what that means is everything is shut down, including our suppliers, Home Depots, Lowe's. We cannot drive to a supply house and buy something. We have to have either curb pick up or deliver to our warehouse. Now, one of the things that the premier of Ontario has done here in our province, which is like the governor, um, we're allowed to work on any projects that were started before April 4th. So being a public tech applicator in Canada and being the only one in Ontario, we have, we're fortunate enough that all the builders uh, that, you know, as, as you guys all probably know, like the Gibbs sand pools of the world, have put so many shells in the ground last year that we're busy right now. But just like Brian mentioned, I don't know what's going to happen in six weeks. So what we're doing right now is we're a business to business service. We're working with all of our builders. We're helping them get their pools tiled. We're helping them putting the public finishes in whatever we can do to get us through this, you know, unknown time. We have about three weeks left until the shutdown is done. And we hope that they can get back into, you know, excavation and putting shells in the ground. And if they don't, you know, it's a, uh, it's a question that none of us can really have an answer for We don't have the crystal ball. And for us at Public Tech Canada here in Ontario, we know we're exercising all of the, we have the COVID-19 protocols like all of you do, uh, but we have each guy and it's in their own pickup truck. We're not putting more than one person in a truck. Uh, so you can imagine how that fares in a big city like Toronto. Just think of New York and rolling your rigs down the road trying to shoot a pool. So we do have, or in Miami, you know, downtown. So it's, it, it causes some difficulties, but we're, we've reduced the size of our crews going to sites, uh, creating a bit more of a workload for each guy, but everyone's really, you know, pulled up their boots and I'm, I'm very proud of our team. And, you know, we're fortunate to be part of the, of this group with you guys, with Genesis, with Pebble Tech, because we can have the opportunity to bounce ideas off each other, how we can get through this time. Yeah, it's one of the things that I've really noticed with my team. Um, you know, we're, we're smaller. Uh, we have 11 employees. Uh, but the one thing that I have noticed is that they're very thankful. Uh, they're thankful to be working. Uh, you know, most of these guys are, I mean, they're, they're your typical blue collar uh, folks. And, and they, uh, you know, they really count on that paycheck coming every week, week in, week out. And they really need that money for their, for their families. Um, you know, and a number of my guys, you know, they live in apartment buildings with, um, with servers and with waitresses and cooks and, and people like that that don't have work. And so they're really, uh, there's really this, this juxtaposition that they're all noticing. Um, and, and I know Rick has kind of touched on it a lot on these Saturday updates. Uh, you know, construction is usually the first thing to go down. Uh, you know, it's, it's where we find ourselves in this really unique situation um, where, uh, at least down here in the States and, and to some extent up in Canada, um, you know, construction is still considered essential. Uh, and so, um, you know, just the uh, ability to have our men keep working, um, you know, and, and the, the women here in the office, uh, you know, they're able to work remotely from home. So I've really appreciated that. Um, how, how are you, um, 
what kind of concerns, what kind of changes in that have you made structurally, Peter, to your business? Because you guys are so seasonal um, and, and this is potentially pretty devastating uh, just because of, you know, your, your building window is so long. Um, you know, Brian and I, uh, you know, we're, we're out in the Sun Belt. We build year round. Uh, that's not necessarily the case in the Northeast. Um, how, what kind of things are you looking at structurally from your business and, and from a financial standpoint to kind of help stabilize yourself moving forward? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. We have talked about it quite a bit here. Um, one of the things that we did about four weeks ago is we never used to do this, but as I mentioned before, we're tiling for our builders. Well, we're pretty fortunate that the team that we have have been in the pool industry for over a dozen years. So we put together a price list to our core builders and we are now adding services, which are really, really integrated with what we already do. We're tiling pools for builders. We're helping them with their renos that they have sold. We're doing bond coats. Um, we've just tried to be an additional arm to them because, you know, with some of these companies up here, they do have staff. The reality is some of them, you know, have an elderly parent they have to take care of and they can't come to work or one of their spouses or partners uh, did get ill or they were exposed. So the workforce up here is an issue. We don't have the same labor pool that California, Florida, and Texas have. Uh, and Brian probably feels the same way in the Carolinas. We don't have the same labor pool. So we've just offered ourselves as an extension to our builders. And that's helping with the cash flow and help keep the guys busy. And, you know, uh, right now there's no spending and it's just, we are looking at keeping every dollar that we make so that we can take care of our team if, you know, things do slow down. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's shift gears here to, with Ryan. Um, so Ryan, um, you have a really unique perspective because not only do you uh, do you do the um, design side of things, so you're, you see projects from the beginning to the very end uh, through steel and gunite and then all the way through on the finish phases. Uh, so kind of give us kind of the update from, from your area, kind of the, the, the Virginia, Carolina area. Um, what do you see in there and what kind of things have you guys changed and uh, how are you guys weathering the storm? Well, so far so good. Um, we, from a design perspective, we're busy. We still have leads. Um, we've certainly in communication because we do work builder to builder with design as well as uh, us to end user, um, homeowners and architects. We're, we're trying to communicate a lot with the builders, try to understand what's going on, where, just keep our finger on the pulse and know what, what's gonna play out in a few months. And that's really hard to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard to gauge, quite frankly. Some of the builders are, are giving us feedback that, hey, nothing's changed, we still have leads. Uh, I spoke to one that sold $300,000 of work last week, you know, right in the, the heart peak of this. Um, at the same time, we hear other builders say, yep, we're already feeling it, or we can't get out and do meetings. Um, they're concerned about the uh, capacity to sell. So um, for our part, we're trying to be very proactive uh, and model what's going to happen to revenue two months from now, three months from now, six months from now, and engage it based on uh, year over year results, but also with this new anomaly, how, how do we react? How do we respond later? So from a design perspective, I feel like it's, things are still strong. Um, there, it's, it, it's hard to gauge, it really is. We don't, it's not like it's, uh, we have a call every day. We never have had a call every day for design work. You know, it, it comes in, it's, it's with builders, it's regular. Um, with homeowners, it's as the wind blows. So um, it, it's hard to gauge. From a gunite perspective, we're really able to see what's happening. You know, the first thing that, that happens after the build, after the front end work is the shell. So we're able to see right now that, at least in the Carolinas, it's starting to go soft. Um, we're, we're seeing a decrease in shells, and while our plaster business comes behind that, there is no effect yet in plaster. They're jamming, they're, they're pushed to the hilt. Um, however, we know that that, that subsequent um, shift in the economy there is going to we're going to see the slowdown in shells show up in the finishes down the road say two months from now you know depending on the building 
cycle is probably 12 weeks, maybe eight weeks. Um, I know in a, with some builders, it's as short as four weeks and some it's six months. So it tends to average out about eight to 12 weeks on a cycle time. And uh, so we expect to see two to three months from now a real slowdown in, in, the, in the pasture. Um, the builder feedback, we're, we're speaking to all the builders we work for, and the builder feedback is still good. You know, um, some of them are selling, selling strong, and some of them are feeling the heat. You know, they're, they're definitely feeling the pinch. Um, do you, let me interrupt you real quick. Um, do yeah. you see any trends there? Uh, do you see um, the, the market moving towards a higher end or a, uh, a more middle of the road? Uh, have you been able to analyze it yet? Um, uh, you know, so, like some of the builders that are slowing down, is it more the, um, uh, the, the lower cost builders or uh, have you noticed any trends yet? Yeah, so far, and, and this is a little bit of just a swag, but, um, you know, so far I feel like the boutique builders, the high-end builders are still selling, still jamming. Um, the production builders, the, uh, uh, the more price point builders, they're the ones feeling the hit. And that's, they're selling to a more marginal market. Um, so uh, I think it would be expected to see that take a, take a fall uh, factor. Um, the high-end builders, their clientele may have a portfolio loss, but they may not have lost their job, and um, they, they still see the, the benefits of owning a pool want to move forward with projects. Um, I've had the unique pleasure recently of, of being in the hole, running a nozzle for the last six weeks. Um, and Brian touched on something that I, I find um, that, that's really, it's really poignant. He, he, he was talking about how excited the homeowners were. And I have noticed that ship, you know, we're out in the field a lot with our guys, but lately the homeowners are there the kids are there, they're out watching us shoot the pool, and they're excited. And they're there all day. They're looking out the window, they're on the porch, they come out, they try to get involved. They're, you just see the happiness on their face. They're so excited. And then you see the neighbors looking over, kind of like Brian suggested, and they see us shooting a pool and they don't have one yet. And, they're, and you, see, you can see their gear spinning, you know? They're thinking, man, I wish I had a pool. So that component of it, it's really, it's a neat feeling too. When you look up and the family's just all ears to ears, knowing they're going to have a pool to swim in here really soon. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I really, I really see this as an opportunity, um, you know, uh, kind of even in the mid market, um, you know, um, uh, a lot of the white collar uh, workers, uh, professionals uh, that are able to transition to a home office, you know, they are still able to be productive. Um, and so uh, I really feel like this is a, a, another unique opportunity, uh, again, like I said, um, uh, after 9-11, uh, where people are going to be, they're going to be a whole lot more homebound. Um, and, you know, I'm really hoping that some of the stimulus stuff uh, can can shore up the economy um, and, and maybe uh, that we will see this as kind of a broad, um, uptick for the entire pool industry uh, and and as we kind of uh, loosen regulations and and kind of get most of the country back into um, back into working uh, that maybe we're even going to see uh, see that drift down into um, kind of your more traditional basic backyard pools uh, but I really do feel like um, you know kind of the mid market and and up um, the, the people that are still employed and still working, um, you know, I, I think there's just this really interesting opportunity right now to sell to them. Uh, and, and so, Brian, I know that you guys um, have really kind of noticed that, uh, that you guys are, are um, uh, really, you're not slowing down. You touched on it a little bit earlier, uh, but you are, you're really starting to notice that, um, you know, that's, there are some different pool companies that are uh, kind of looking at this like, hey, you know, everybody can take a vacation a little bit. And, um, you know, there's, there's still plenty of opportunity out there. Um, and, and I know at least you, you've shared with me that, that your crews are, uh, you haven't slowed down really much, if anything. Uh, you've transitioned to different places, but, um, you know, there's, you're, you're still going really strong. 
Yes. So you, you touched on it a little uh, when you just said uh, some places, right? So uh, the city of, of Delray Beach, it was closed down, no workers, nothing. And it was really one of the only cities that stopped workers from working. Well, then we were able to allocate those crews that we have in those northern uh, divisions and allocate them towards Fort Lauderdale, Parkland, and other areas that were very busy and strong. But then now we're able, when doing so, um, the builds quicker were, were the people, like Ryan said, the people are seeing it and they're seeing that we're showing up, we're, we're building and, and nothing is stopped. So then as there's some uncertainty everywhere in their life, there's something certain there. This is, it, it's actually, it's coming faster than what they expected. So for us really keeping our, our men working and cause they want to work and, and, and they want, they want to, not be a statistic uh they want to work and and that's what they do and, and really that brings us our family but our company a lot of joy and, and and really that's our fuel is is knowing that we're able to keep you know a roof and provide in, in for each individual that that's part of our company so um yes uh the cities now are all allowing work as long as each municipality has certain regulations that we have to follow which we do uh and, and give all of our crew members all the necessities that are needed to do that. And um, so if you're out there, you're able to work. It's actually now uh, a little easier commute. There's less people on the roads, on the highways. So our guys are able to get to those job sites, uh, you know, a little quicker using a little less gas and, 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 and get to more sites um, easier. So um, I do see that absolutely uh, this time as a, a, a period that ramping up construction and that's what we're doing. Uh, ramping it up, trying to do the job, the, the dig, the form, and the steel one, two, three day, instead of it being, you know, a week and a half process, we're getting it done back to back to back. And it's, and it's dividend by that neighbor telling them, and then that person telling them, and, and, and people are excited because they want to get into a backyard and want to get into a pool. So um, it, it's, it's definitely an opportunity. That's good to hear, Brian. You know, um, I wanted to ask uh, all three of you guys a question because uh, you're kind of leaders in the industry. You've always taken education uh, to heart. I mean, you guys have always been part of Genesis, always part of uh, the Watershape University. Peter, I know you sit on some of the boards for the National Plasters Council. Um, it, it sounds like everybody's going to be staying at home. Uh, Peter, can I ask you a question real quick? What it, I want to start with you. Um, do you see yourself how soon do you see yourself going back to trade shows and, and taking classes? What's, you know, when do you think you show yeah. up? You know, I think a lot of people, you ask all of us, we're going to have maybe a different viewpoint. My personal viewpoint is um, I'm not ready to go to a trade show anytime soon. Uh, I think that the 2020 season is, uh, is not going to happen. Uh, and for me, uh, we had a board meeting call yesterday with the NPC and our next meeting is next February. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now is uh, February, 2021 in uh, Coronado beach in California there. So I think the trade shows have a, a big hurdle to overcome. And I think uh, what we're doing today, I think is going to become more normal. I mean, I have been in business for a long time, like all you guys taking a lot of education and I've done more zoom calls and go to meeting calls in the last week than I have my entire life combined. Yeah, and I think that's really what we're starting to notice as well, is that we're very much um, just, uh, we have a captive audience right now. Uh, and so, um, you know, with this Ask the Masters platform, we're really trying to um, just get good information out. Uh, you know, we've been doing these business, uh, these business meetings um, uh, and uh, on Saturdays, uh, and then, you know, just the normal podcast stuff. But yeah, I mean, I, I really agree with you. I, I think that it's going to be uh, 2020 for sure is going to be a challenge. Um, and, and the opportunity to kind of go back online uh, and, and be able to get some of your, um, some of your education and some of the things uh, uh, through an online platform. Um, you know, we, we kind of did a, uh, a test run um, on Easter weekend where we, um, yeah, we had Bob Lowry, uh, you know, one of preeminent pool chemistry experts in the entire country. Um, you know, we did a, a, an online class and certification with him 
and you know we had great results and great turnout uh, and so um, I think that there's a hunger within the industry for it um, and and uh, you know we, we're really looking to kind of uh, see how we can fill that and I really um, you know uh, what's your perspective Peter again from uh, from the National Plasters Council um, uh, you know are you guys starting to starting to realize that as well because the education still has to happen uh, and and the fact that it's taken place at the trade shows for so long um, you know at, at least for this year I, I tend to agree with you uh, if anything um, well, especially in Canada, I think 2020 is, is uh, you know, completely um, off the rails, if that. Uh, but, uh, you know, living here in California, um, you know, we're, we're fairly liberal here in California, uh, to say the least. And um, our governor is talking about, you know, no gatherings of any size before August or September. And, and with the way this whole thing has happened, um, you know, that's that's potentially pie in the sky uh, you know I'm not I'm not super confident that 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 date is not going to continue getting moved out so I guess uh, my question for you is uh, how as far as a national organization are you guys starting to explore those kind of uh, online offerings and, and looking at that because education does still have to happen yes and uh, I, I don't sit on the committee for education I do sit on the board and yesterday the uh, committee chair did speak to that and they've been working on a online learning management system now for some time uh, but obviously now it's being uh, accelerated and our startup certification classes our classes for pool inspector programs that we're starting up uh, they're all going to be we're talking about gearing them to an online uh, class so that people from across north america you know canada and the u.s can take these classes and still get you know the information and education they need because if we just sit back and wait to go back to the way things used to be. We don't know when and if that's ever gonna happen. So uh, I, I already know that we're putting the plans in place to start education online. So, you know, I, I'd like, thank you, Peter. That's, that's you know, epic. Let's go to Brian. Brian, uh, you know, we were in Chicago together. We walked around the streets. We, you know, we were with Mikey Nance and we uh, drew pictures and it was, it was a great time. I mean, it was absolutely fabulous for Genesis. Are, are you going to uh, be going to a trade show real quick? I mean, listen, I'm open to it. I, I, I have a, a positive outlook on life. If you, if you take the necessity uh, steps to, to protect yourself and others and respect others in their space, I, if the trade shows are offered, I mean, we, we will definitely attend because of the, what, what's gained from there. And, and potentially if, if it's smaller and it's more intimate and it's more, of the same type of like minds that are attending, there could be a lot of gain from that. Um, smaller groups. I do think that you're seeing it at, at home education now with the, with the kids and 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 having to finish up school uh, remotely. I, I do think that that might become a, the new norm when doing maybe on a larger scale of people learning. Uh, but if on site at trade shows, I think if it it can it can definitely um, evolve and, and offer a great uh, something different, even more uh, beneficial in the industry doing trade shows. But I'm not going to be scared tr of travel. Um, you know, I do believe in personal cleanliness and health, and and you can you can persevere. So as long as you know the the United States is open to traveling and, and not being going rogue on them. But if, if it's, if it's conducive with what's life's going on, then absolutely. I'm not going to be worrisome to get on a plane or, or to be around a group of people. Um, so I will be absolutely interested in would attend. Yeah, I think I'm, uh, I'm kind of on the fence. Uh, I'm not exactly sure um, where I stand. I mean, I'm, uh, you know, I, I live, we have eight people in our house. So I have six kids. So we're just a walking germ factory anyway. Um, so the reality of, of getting sick uh, is, is, is always a factor at my house. Uh, but I do, I do feel like there is a big part of the country um, that is very concerned. Uh, and, and um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how this, how this shakes out uh, over the next uh, probably year or two. 
Um, let's shift gears a little bit uh, and, and talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, kind of the PPP program and, um, uh, and some of these kind of government type programs. Um, uh, I want to get each of your perspective and, and uh, let's start with Peter um, uh, and talk a little bit about Michelle's company uh, down in Florida and, and some of the opportunities and, and, you know, I'd be interested to know, is Canada doing anything similar? Are they doing any kind of, uh, you know, social programs or, or any sort of uh, programs building up businesses there? Um, that's a question I have not researched. Yeah, so up here in Canada, we have a federal program that if you have between 20000 and $1.5 million in annual payroll, uh, they have a $40,000 small business loan, and it's nothing compared to the PPP uh, in the U.S. of A. Our program is available to businesses here. Uh, to my knowledge to date, do not come even close to what is available uh, in the U.S. So uh, going to that, you know, um, in, for Michelle's company, um, she definitely looked into the PPP and uh, did put in the paperwork and going through that process still. Uh, to my knowledge, that has not come through yet. I know there were some hiccups with the program. I do know companies that did apply and get it in different industries, uh, but I don't know anyone in Southwest Florida that, that did the application and got funded uh, to date. Yeah, um, Brian, have you guys received your funding at, at, at this point? Uh, like Peter said, we have it all, all the paperwork done, but we haven't received any uh, stimulus or any funding yet. It, they did follow up and say that it would be coming in next week, but we do know that that whole fund is kind of drying out a little, you know, and there's a little longer wait time. So uh, we haven't received yet. File work, everything is is in and process, but we haven't received, but we're, we, we're supposed to be. Yeah, so we actually just signed our paperwork yesterday uh, and we got our deposit yesterday. Uh, and one of the interesting things uh, as I've been following this is, is kind of everybody's following this um, is that some of the smaller regional banks seem to be outperforming some of the big name brand, uh, uh, some of the larger big box um, nationwide uh, companies or banking institutions. Um, so, but one of the really interesting things as I was uh, signing the paperwork and just chatting with my banker yesterday, um, uh, my bank is taking new applications uh, because there is, um, you know, the proposal is on the table to significantly expand the funding on this. And so, um, you know, just an encouragement to everybody, if you've been on the fence about this, um, you know, I say get off the fence. Um, no one knows what is going to happen. Uh, and, and the signs are looking positive, at least for the pool industry. But we also don't know what kind of um, panic is going to happen. We can't predict what's going to happen, you know, four or five, six weeks or even, you know, three, four months down the road. Um, if, if, we, if we take a turn and uh, unemployment stays at where it's at and we have to, for, for some reason, keep the economy shut down for longer than anybody's anticipating, uh, you know, the ripple effect of that, uh, you know, may not necessarily quote unquote affect us um, as an industry, but uh, it's going to affect uh, globally, um, you know, the entire country. And so uh, just being able to have that, that money sitting in a bank account and being able to, uh, to have that to hedge some of the potential challenges, I, I, you know, as a business owner, I see it as a very wise thing. Um, and, and just, like I said, um, we signed ours, we got funded yesterday. Uh, but my bank uh, fully anticipates that this is going to, um, uh, they're going to add more funding to it because uh, the demand was much greater than they anticipated. So um, I, I still think, uh, even though the news is now saying, I think they ran out of money on, on Wednesday or Thursday this week, um, still do your due diligence and, and get the paperwork in there uh, because no one knows, no one knows what's coming up. Um, so what's, um, what do you guys see, uh, Brian, what do you guys see moving forward? Um, are, you guys, uh, are, are you guys feeling like this is gonna be um, uh, a, a, a good? How are you guys preparing as you look uh, two, three, and four months down the road? Are you guys, uh, what's, well, are you very bullish? Well, it's, you touched on it too a little bit with Florida opening up their beaches and, and, and I do think that there's going to be a three month 
two month, three month, really wait and see period because no, there's not a cure for this, you know, and, there, and, and when you start reopening massive areas of population, you know, we have millions of people that live in a, a small geographical location. If they start trying to flood those beach, it, it, they started in Jacksonville because they can maintain the people and see how that kind of um, goes and see what kind of regulations they need to take. But I think over the next two months, you're going to have people that are optimistic but I, I do believe as we reopen, there is a chance of a setback if all of a sudden things spike, you know, with, with, with the virus because of reopening, that that's where for us, that's that, that PPP check, that, that safety net, since right now we're fortunate to be busy and have that turnover of people buying and wanting pools we're looking at that, hey, we're reopening as a state kind of slowly right now, but we are. Um, it's kind of wait and see for these next two months if, if it opens smoothly and, and it doesn't get out of control with the media or, or the pers of what reality is. Um, I do think it, it, it's, things will be good and I do have a bullish outlook, but I do think it's very touchy with the reopening because that's where you can very much have a setback and that setback can be worse than the initial, you know, it can be in the hysteria or the, the scaredness of people, you know, uh, that's when you would see people really pull back their, their, their finances and, and, and nest in and hold. So it's a two month period right now, since we're reopening, I, I, I do know and feel that the first wave of the storm opened the opportunity. It opened, uh, where we're at right now this next wave is 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 a wait and see and and hopefully it's not a wave at all hopefully it's it's clear it's it's smooth open transition and it'll be good yeah i mean i think that's that's a position i'm taking um you know we've been uh we've been in the market to, we need a couple more trucks for the boys um uh, but um you know right now i'm just gonna take a wait and see um you know, it's, we're working. Um, we have not seen a slowdown, uh, at least here in California, in my market, uh, in the demographic that I serve. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're, we're quite busy as well. But um, I, I, we just don't know what's going to happen. And so uh, any large capital expenditures, uh, anything like that, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to kind of sit tight and make sure that if we do slow down here in August, September, um, that I've got the cash reserves in the bank to be able to to weather that uh, and, and to be, keep my uh, keep all the families uh, that that depend on paychecks from fluid dynamics keep them all fed and and working uh, in that because um, you know we're nothing without our people and and so that's such an important piece uh, to 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 make sure that we take care of. Dave, this has been incredible, you know, uh, kind of the East Coast from Canada with Peter uh, and we've got uh, Brian all the way down south and Ryan Oaks in the middle and uh, quite informative. We went uh, all kinds of different directions, but I think the, uh, the one thing that we did see is that the pool industry is in a pretty good position on this whole thing to recap. So um, I want to thank all of our guests, the leaders in the industry, Peter, Brian and Ryan for, uh, for stopping by and taking some time out of their morning and uh, just remind all of our listeners if they would take a, a moment to make sure that they like us, uh, that they follow us, and that they comment on our uh, on our content wherever they're seeing it, whether it's on YouTube, iTunes, or any of those places. So um, great show today, and um, I think until we see you next time, we're out of here.